Today we're gonna go through very interesting news related to Blender, new software releases and updates, in addition to cool stuff in game development and VFX. Following its release of Unreal Engine, Cesium the 3D Geospatial Data Platform announced its first stable release of Cesium for the Open3D Engine, which will enable 3D Geospiro capabilities and 3D tile streaming for Open3D Engine. Open3D Engine has recently received its own first stable release, introducing Linux support, a binary standalone installer, and a new terrain system to Amazon's Lumberyard-based open-source 3D development engine. Using Cesium Native will make all features of Cesium for Unreal reusable for Open3D Engine, including support for 3D tile stacks, physics, collisions, and characters. There is also the integration with Cesium Ion Cloud Services for access to curated 3D GeoSpiral content and 3D tiling pipelines for your data. As part of Cesium Ion, you will get access to global terrain, imagery, buildings, and photogrammetry datasets, in addition to a full-scale, high-accuracy integration with Open3D Engine, Script Canvas, and much more. You can also check this AI tool that generates sketches based on images. It introduces a method for performing clip-guided semantically aware object sketching, or in short, Clipasso. This optimization-based implementation of the clip model converts an image of an object to a sketch, allowing for varying levels of abstraction while preserving its key visual features at the same time. By extracting the salient region for the input image, it allows you to define the initial location of the strokes. The Rona renderer is one of the staples of the architectural visualization market, and it has now been ported to work with Blender. This is not an official integration, however. Artist Adi Khan from Uzbekistan developed the add-on to make the workflow in the renderer convenient for Blender users. This Rona Blender integration add-on is based on Rona standalone, Kaios's GUILS edition of the renderer. Also, the integration can be used with Rona standalone 3.0, which is available for free or with commercial builds on the Kaios's website. The work on the integration add-on is still in progress, so some features of the official 3ds Max and Cinema 4D integration are missing. Also, you can expect some manual scene setup, but still, if you want to use the Rona Render Engine for Blender, you can do this now with this option. Unity also has announced the release of the AR Companion app for the Android and iOS, formerly known as Mars Companion app. The AR Companion app allows you to capture real-world data using the mobile device and send the captured data easily to Unity Editor. Light Engine also has announced the release of Light Trace to render 2.2.1. Some of its new features include a new physically based sky model, improved import of specular glossiness assets, in addition also to physical boom using FFT image convolution. There are also material layers that give the ability to render different elements of your scene separately into different images like background, foreground, shadows, etc. The image can be post-processed and composed onto the final render using external photo editing software, and the renderer also saw a lot of bug fixes and UI improvements as well. Now with some game development news, team of veteran game developers from CD Red Project the studio behind the Witcher franchise and the recent Cyberpunk 2077 have launched their own studio, which they dubbed Finally Rebel Wolves. The team is comprised of seasoned game developers who worked on a variety of titles, including the Witcher series, Cyberpunk 2077, Thronebreaker, and Shadow Warrior 2. The studio will be led by Conrad, who is a CD Red Project's ex-developer, and they are currently working on a AAA title. Dark Fantasy RPG, written by Rebel Wolves co-founder and narrative director Jacob, who also worked on The Witcher 3. He said, we want to experiment, push the envelope, and discover new ways for telling stories in video games. We felt that creating a company where we call the shots will give us the freedom to take the necessary risks to fulfill these ambitions. Netflix has announced this week that it is partnering with 2K and Take-Two Interactive to produce a film adaptation of the renowned and beloved video game franchise called Bioshock, with Vertigo Entertainment and Take-Two serving as producers. Unfortunately, however, as of right now, no information regarding the upcoming movie's writers and directors have been revealed, or where exactly the movie story is gonna take place, but it is likely that more information will follow in the near future. 
also head of newly formed Nagashi Studio, Toshiro Nagashi, who worked as general director of the Yakuza games, shared the studio's approach to making games and talked about its debut title and its goals. In an interview with IGN Japan, he noted that the studio does not plan to lower its expectations, rather intending to replicate the global success of the Yakuza series. You wouldn't find us making like smartphone puzzle games, Nagoshi further explained. What the world expects from us is games with dramatic and moving stories, and that's what we want to make. So that's where our focus is. And when asked if he already had an idea, and what would that mean for his first game, Nagoshi said, Yes, as a game creator, I've always had a number of things I'd like to do one day, and there is one idea in particular from my personal locker I'd like to try. Currently the studio employs 10 people, however, the game designer is planning to expand the staff to 100 employees in the future. Also, Nagashi didn't reveal when the new title will see the light of day. Focus Home Interactive, the publisher of Plague Tale Innocence and the long-anticipated Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, announced that it acquired the French developer Liquor Studio for an undisclosed amount. The Paris-based studio currently is home to 20 specialists, and they are developing their latest title, Middle Slug Tactics. It is also known for Roguelike Rogue Lords, which was released in September last year. The long-awaited release of Metal Slug Tactics will be later this year, and it will be published by Laker Partner and Focus subsidiary Dotimo. Also with some VFX news, Alt VFX released a breakdown reel of their work on Netflix The Power of the Dog. The video breaks down some of these shots in the movie, revealing the multiple layers that were imposed on top of the raw footage, such as the different assets. It is always amazing to realize that you can't really guess which elements in the shot are real and which ones are CG. But I think we are at the point where it is virtually impossible to tell which is which, even for the professional eye. The only time you can do this is when something doesn't work such as lighting or when the team of VFX artists didn't do a great job. Other than that, it is usually perfect. LAACMC Graph has published nearly two hour video on their YouTube channel in which the heads of double negative departments involved in the making of Doom Visual Effects, Paul Lambert, Production VFX Supervisor, Tristan Miles VFX Supervisor, Brian Connor VFX Supervisor as well, in addition to Ruben Lucum, which is an animation director. The speakers each have a short presentation where they will break down some of the most iconic shots in the movie and how they were achieved. They will discuss some of the techniques and challenges they faced and how they were able to achieve the level of realism, especially when it comes to sand and exactly they were able to nail the massive desolate desert in the movie. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.